know, how can we, um, how do we know our personality? Like, do we know, we don't know everybody else's personality, but that's something we can learn as we build relationships and stuff like that. You're not gonna love, like everybody, but you gotta love some people. You gotta love some people that you work with. You ain't gonna like how they, they talk to you, and you're trying to help them, but you gotta, that's a social skill you have to grow in. Um, some people are always angry, and you gotta learn how to like, okay, let me be happy and try to just be happy, and hopefully my happiness could break through your anger. You know, and that's a so, that, that speaks of social yeah. love. And that also part of my social media. So it's kind of you know now. So it's just like you know it's just like it's also time. This story, like this is ha what happened to me. Uh, this is what happened to um, my loved one. You know, they they recovered. We heard some stories today. People as they shared and shared their stories on how long they've been um, fighting a good fight of recovery. Because I know I've lived in a mess. Mm -hmm. I live with my life jacked up, uh, and I've lived in a good place too, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like okay. So there's chaos going on, and there's people fighting. But I can walk into that situation, and oftentimes calm it down. Bring a whole environment in, right? I'm gonna have a relationship with you if I don't know how to have a relationship. You know, I have to learn to have a relationship with myself. I have to learn to set myself out to dinner. I have to learn to take myself out mm -hmm. to dinner. Mm -hmm. so I have to sign right here with your past, with your past. But yeah. today I'm not living this way. I'm living a different way. And that's for the future. <coughs> awesome. Awesome. There's nothing that we remember properly. Um, I used to. We're talking about financial wellness and. Doesn't spiritual wellness link to that very closely? Because how, um, because how you know everybody don't get it, and if you're not spiritually rooted, it's going to be hard to think of anything financial, especially when you're first starting out. You don't have the money, you don't have a budget, you know. You, you know, you, you get your money and it's all spiritual wellness to believe. That is going to get greater later. You know? Time. Time. Still, Chris, Chris Williams. Another message that's constant is God bless to everyone. So, I'll give some details about my experience that I had. About 20,000, well, not 20,000, 2008. Around that time, I vacationed from work, had a heat stroke. The heat stroke left me unemployed when I returned back to work because I didn't have enough vacation time. Of course, that shifted my mindset and led to confusion and depression. So also around that time, or about a year sooner, a few months, I was in a relationship and my lady friend at the time has decided to move to Washington, D.C. So my understanding of home and support and love was entirely different. But an option that I had was to return to my family home. When I returned there, they didn't understand the change I was going through, going through a depression, going through a depression. So I felt unwanted and ashamed for kind of getting off balance with my usual flow of life as a contributor or working man to multiple households. That led me to not even want to be in a home setting. So I turned to the street for reflection, think about what my next move would be. But as some people might know, depression doesn't necessarily give clarity. It brings doubt and confusion about where to go. By the grace of God, I was approached on the street one day. I might have just been at a park sitting, thinking on a bench. And somebody mentioned St. John's Hospice to me. It's a men's shelter in Philly, 1221 race to be exact, that provides support services and free meals to people. And they also open the doors of their coffee house for people to find relief from the street to go and stay overnight. And that was a major godsend being able to stay there, especially during cold winter nights, where the only other option would have been to try to reconnect with non-supportive family or 
to just literally lay on the street and risk freezing to death. Mm. So St. John's Hospice was a godsend. I lived at St. John's Hospice in a coffee house for several months. And I ultimately became a resident at the shelter and stayed there for about a year. While there, I was still pushing through depression. I had a condition that was continuing to bug me too. I was experiencing difficulty with walking because I had a condition called gout. So that indoor shelter, the environment, the support, all of that led me to begin to get more mobile, more active. Of course, at that time, work wasn't the first priority on my list. Even though I love to work, that wasn't the first priority. I had to address the mental challenge of being depressed and the physical challenge of the gout flares. But lo and behold, after working out, or just taking walks after dinner, I noticed that there was a group of runners out. They belonged to back on my feet. And they would recruit residents of St. John's and other area shelters to join their team to kind of get back into a room of life. Mm -hmm. And upon graduating, runners would be awarded money for first month security deposit, wow. last month security deposit, and monies to help address furthering education or paying off fines, etc. So I said, this sounds like a good thing. Instead of working out or walking after dinner, let me join this group. I got to say that was one of the most satisfying opportunities for me at that time. This was about 2010, 2011. I'm still a member of Back On My Feet. I graduated from the program, and today, of course, I no longer live in a shelter. I have my own apartment. And I contribute to the Back of My Feet organization. I recommitted as of February 1st so I can mentor people who are running to their miles. I'm grateful that God had his hands on me and total strangers stepped into my life to hold me up. Nowadays, I look forward to extending my hands around people. 